Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm uh, Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the global gaming, lodging, and leisure sectors. I'm joined by Ben Bubeck. Ben is a Senior Director and Analytic Manager in the gaming, lodging, and leisure sector based here in New York. Ben, thanks for joining. Sure. Let's first start with what, what are the economic outlooks in the different regions? Sure, and, and as you know, the, the sectors we follow are very discretionary in nature, and so as we you know, as we form our expectations for the next year, we focus on economic indicators that we think are most correlated with consumers' willingness to spend, things like real GDP growth, consumer spending growth, uh, unemployment rates, things like that. Also, as we're forming our lodging outlook, we focus on metrics that are linked to corporate profitability, for example, the S&P 500 index, because of the importance of business travel to that sector. Just very briefly, S&P's economic expectations across the various sectors that are relevant, to, the regions that are relevant to us. Um, for the U.S., our economists are currently forecasting continued modest growth in some of the metrics I mentioned earlier, gradual improvement to unemployment. Um, also, our economists recently reduced their, their recession risk estimate to 15 to 20 percent, which is a, a big improvement because that metric was as high as 40 percent back in 2011. Uh, in Europe, Obviously, the ongoing sovereign debt crisis is a bit of an overhang for, for all credits. Um, the Eurozone and the UK have entered a new period of recession, and at this point our economists are forecasting flat GDP for the year in the Eurozone um, in 2013 and, and just very modest growth in the UK next year. Lastly, our forecasts for um, Asia focus on our economists' expectations for the countries that are relevant, particularly for the gaming sector, countries like China and Singapore. Um, and, and generally across the Asian countries that are relevant, our economists expect, they expect GDP growth um, in varying degrees ranging from low single digit growth up to high single digit growth. So that's sort of the core input to our forecasts. All right, so, so let, let's spend a minute uh, on gaming you mentioned. What, what is our outlook for some of the major global gaming markets in 13? Sure, well, let's start with the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, at this point we're forecasting continued low single digit growth in gaming revenue, much like we saw and we are seeing in 2012. Um, we expect visitation trends to remain positive, which should, su should support that growth. We don't see any meaningful catalyst for an uptick in spend per customer necessarily, and that's been the biggest, biggest challenge for that market. In terms of the lodging side of Las Vegas, we do think RevPAR will continue to grow on the Strip, probably aligned with gaming revenue. There were a couple years where, where RevPAR really outperformed gaming, but at this point we think they'll be pretty well aligned in 2013. Uh, moving to the Atlantic City market, uh, we believe that the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy will have, uh, you know, will weigh heavily on the fourth quarter of 2012. But we also believe there'll be lingering impacts into 13, potentially into the summer of 13. And so, with that in mind, we're currently forecasting at best flat for the Atlantic City gaming market for next year versus this year. Um, there's also um, continue to be changes and evolutions in the competitive. Uh, dynamic in that region. As, as you know, Maryland will introduce table games over the course of 13. We understand a lot of the Pennsylvania casinos are investing and in expanding their amenities, and so those, those issues will also put pressure on the market. Potentially on a positive note, we do think that the cleanup efforts uh, in the region, uh, the rebuilding efforts, will bring folks around the area, and that could support a little bit of, of stronger performance in Atlantic City. We also expect some pretty aggressive uh, ad campaigns to promote summer visitation to the shore, which, which could help the market a little bit. Uh, moving over to Asia, Macau, for 2013 we do expect growth. Um, we th we're forecasting 5 to 10 percent growth for the market, which is re really pretty well aligned with our, our economists' forecast for China GDP growth, which is a key feeder market to Macau. Um, we, we feel like over the next few years, China GDP growth and Macau gaming revenue growth will be very closely correlated particularly given the lack of new capacity opening up in Macau until at least 2015. Lastly, moving on to the Singapore market, uh, the market's shown some weakness this year, a couple of weak quarters in Q2 and Q3, uh, following a really quick ramp up since the, since the market opened up in 2010. For 2013, we're forecasting 0 to 5 percent growth. Again, that's pretty well aligned with our economists' forecast for Singapore. Um, we think that the current lodging capacity there is going to constrain growth. It's pretty limited capacity. Bookings are, or occupancy is in the high 90 percent regularly. We also feel like the government may continue to take actions to discourage locals from gambling. And so those things should weigh on growth and keep it sort of in the low single digit area. All right. How, how about we, uh, let's talk a little bit about the lodging sector. Pretty active year in 2012. 
What do we think about the sector, specifically the U.S. and Europe, in, in 2013? Sure. 2012 was a very active year. Um, it were to end up with a very strong RevPAR performance in the U.S. Again, we're expecting 6 to 7 percent RevPAR growth. This year, Europe will also manage to grow a couple percentage points despite the ongoing uh, recession. Um, but we do know that lodging typically lasts, lags the recession by 6 to 12 months. Um, additionally, throughout this year, many of our lodging operators, or most of them, have been pretty aggressive with, with share repurchases, dividend payments, and they've added a little bit of leverage to their, their profiles. Nothing that's hurt ratings, but they are a little bit more levered entering 13 than they, than they were entering 2012. And so at this point, we're, we're entering a new year. We're starting to observe um, a little bit of moderation in, in lodging demand in the U.S. We have a recession going on in Europe. We have a little bit of slowing in various other important global economies. Um, still, despite all that, we do believe that these lodging operators will continue to be at least moderately aggressive pursuing acquisitions, returning capital to shareholders, because the outlook for RevPAR growth in the U.S. remains strong. Uh, for 2013, we are forecasting and rating to 3 to 6 percent growth in RevPAR in 2013. Our, our European RevPAR forecast is for flat to slightly down uh, RevPAR. And so really as we're thinking about our, our list of rated lodging companies, the key rating factor over the next um, year or so really is their ability to manage financial flexibility in the face of the desire to return capital and, and a little bit of moderation in the industry. Um, we, we measure financial flexibility by things like cushions relative to our thresholds for each company, amount of cash on the balance sheet, any asset sale proceeds we expect to come in or potentially could come in. Um, and so we'll be watching that sort of, that, that flexibility closely. But that said, nearly all of our lodging ratings currently maintain stable outlooks um, because we do believe that the, that the portfolio is pretty well positioned in terms of flexibility over the next year or so. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate Thanks, it. Mike. We'll see you again next time.